Well, I just finished close to five hours worth of meditation. It is uh, just about a no little after, well, 12.30. So it's in, noon, in the noon hour. Within, it's within the noon hour. So it's 12 hours and 31 minutes into the day of, fr of Saturday, November 14th, uh, 2020. And we are, well, uh, we are getting into, we're beginning the vlog for the long uh, two-day uh, vlog, which is, because uh, two days mor morphs into one, and we're going to vlog it. Uh, just as we, as we vlog everyone, everything else, we, we, the vlogging has been going well. It is in part of my regular routine, so, uh... I've been vlogging every single day. The editing, not so much. Uh, the editing has been falling off um, as I attempt to do more things like this. The meditation now took me close to five hours. Um, the work back here that, that changed the environment, and I think I think the lighting is better now than it was before. I can see from the monitor. Uh, that the colors are better than they were before. That the that the framing is better, and so that's a, that's a good thing. I I, I think that it's going to turn out. I'll know more when I edit it and watch it back. But I think that will be something that will be uh, uh, interesting to see how the vlogs change from from where the way they were before before when I was here before everything was changed as to compare it with how they are now. And I think that there has been an improvement. Now, one thing that I want to talk about, to bring up in our discussion, in our conversation, is gnosis is a large umbrella term simply for knowledge. That's all it means. It's a Greek word for knowledge. And it's spelled G-N-O-S-I-S, so gnosis. And that means knowledge. And so it could be all types of types of knowledge. Uh, the typical meaning uh, that it, that's taken under, and that you see it more often with, are with people who are of the Wiccan or the uh, even the Satanic variety. Uh, some of them who call themselves pagans. Uh, these are the New Age religions. These are all part of the Gnostic umbrella, but they're the ones who take the forefront and sort of give you the left hand, the left hand and right hand path. Uh, in terms of the modern view, but the thing is, is there's a lot more to it than that. Uh, there's a lot within the East, uh, particularly uh, when we think of Eastern uh, thought, Eastern religion, Eastern Gnosis, we'd primarily think of Hinduism and Buddhism, but it's not known by very many people, and there is a sort of unseen path in the East, not an Eastern Christian path. And it's fundamentally different than uh, the Western path. And the, because what happens, the Western path is primarily law, it's about legal, it's about religion, following particular rules and sticking within the rules. Where the Eastern path is not that, along, not that at all, it is an open path, it's a path that you have to choose, where rather than, look, rather than approaching the path you know, in, the, in terms of your relationship with God, with fear, but rather with love. It's, it's, it's a path that you choose to take on your own. And as you endeavor along the path, and there is an endeavor, there is a struggle on the path. But the struggle is not with others. The struggle is with, the struggle is with yourself. The battles are with yourself, in your own desires, your selfishness. And as you battle your selfishness, and in, in these meditations are used as exercises, to help control these thoughts of selfishness. Uh, you move past into a greater level of love than you had before. And that, as that occurs, your relationship with, the, with, the, with, with heaven, with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and this includes, of course, the Son is Christ, in terms of our path. Uh, in other paths, not, it's not as well defined. It's, you have Krishna as on one path, uh, uh, who uh, who is an emanation of, of their god, the, the Hindu god? If you look at the, at the endpoints and study it more particularly, you'll see that there are differences in the endpoints. Uh, so the question is, if you're a practitioner on the path, you're not simply following along as sheep. 
you're not part of the flock, you have to ask yourself the question, if you're on a path, where are you going? Where is your intended direction? And the difference is between uh, you, these, we call these so-called religions, the notes that there are different gods, there are different, there are different endpoints to the path that you're on. And you want to make sure that, that, that the end point that you're on is what you want. And for me, the end point that I'm, that I'm on, the end point in, in terms of the path that I'm on, in my relationship with Christ, in my relationship with God, uh, I am offered eternal life. In other words, my existence continues. I create the initial path here while I'm alive, but then after I die, the path continues. And that's something that appeals to me. But the thing is, if you look at the other paths, like uh, for Buddhism or Hinduism, they'll do all the same things, and possibly more than what I do in terms of their devotion. But their endpoints end. They they become simply become. They don't become one with God. There is no offer to become one with God. There is no kinship like that. But rather, they dissolve into the background of the creation. They become part of the universe. They become one with the universe. And to not have, after all that effort, not have eternal life. In other words, same effort, same prayers, same type of uh, of, uh, of meditation in terms of your fasting meditations, in terms of uh, living a dharmic life. The 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 the, the the exercise of being dharmic, of, of, of being transcendental, trans uh, transcending the physical existence. And what you see in a large chunk of these sort of transcendental uh, understandings is that the body, the physical body, is a husk. And, of course, you burn, in order to help the soul escape, you need to burn the husk up. That's what happens at death. This is why in Hinduism, along with other other uh, burial rites, you have the burning of the body. But in Christianity, the, the, the Eastern Christianity, that's not the case. Not only are, is your soul liberated, but so is the physical body. In other words, we get to keep the body that we have, even no matter how, what happens to it. The body reforms. After death, if we are... If we are in the right path, on the right path, have the right relationship with God, we will receive our bodies back. We will maintain our individuality. We, even though we are part of Christ, we have put on Christ, we maintain our individuality. We don't lose ourselves into any form of background or just sort of, you know, we become essential, immortal. We become like God. And that's why I chose the path that I'm on. And, and I am not anything special, even though I may, I'll be calling my, I'm calling myself uh, Bishop Daniel, or, or and these will be some new uh, uh, programs that are coming up on, on Cyborg Alpha TV Network. Uh, there'll be a, a program called Meditations, and this is where a large chunk of this stuff will go, where the, the discussion of the spiritual will go there. As the music room sets up, and uh, we bring the music in the... Theology and Gnosis will kind of go out, uh, but it's going to go out to its own particular show. And it's going to be a discussion on the spiritual paths, your choice along the spiritual paths, and asking the question, well, what do you want? In your spiritual choices, you have this free will, where do you want to go? Monday, November 16th, it is 6 hours and 53 minutes into the day. Ooh, ooh. Almost 7 a.m. And, <laughs> as per usual, things are always rolling through my mind. And I guess this is a place to sort of open up and sort of <clears throat> spill out the contents of the mind as well at the time. This is a conversation. 
And I'm sort of thinking to myself, I was watching the window and looking at the weather, the weather forecast, which are calling for snow. Uh, at least they were, anyways. <laughs> my my moods change, my dreams change, uh, as the uh, seasons change. I'm happy for summer. I enjoy the summer. By the time uh, the summer is over, September, October, particularly October, I'm ready for fall. Fall it seems to be the shortest season for me. It uh, because it's, it's when fall gets here, usually mid-November, uh, I'm ready for winter. I'm ready ready for Christmas, the Christmas season. And people kind of bemoan Christmases because you know it's. It's the shortest, it's a very short holiday uh, for many people. They only have it on the 25th, and they only have it for a couple hours. Uh, I have Christmas for more than two months. And it does, it, it has nothing to do with shopping or anything like that. It's just that uh, the Christmas season, in terms of where it was initially in terms of its historical perspective uh, typically comes in with about, about, comes in uh, just a little after mid-November and doesn't leave until February 1st and as soon as you finish around uh, the Christmas around February 1st you begin preparations for what people call Easter or we call it Pascha or Passover and it's basically the New Testament Passover and that takes you all the way to April. So you have a, a, a sense and a feeling, particularly if you have uh, some form of family tradition, uh, that brings about certain emotions and certain... Uh, 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 I would say the emotions aren't necessarily... The, 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 it's not about being emotional in terms of <laughs> you know, being overwrought. Uh, but rather is emotional where you have a mood shift the the, the mood the, the the feeling the vibe of the season uh, shifts and as this occurs so do your dreams because your dreams are very much a tied to your emotions tied to uh, your mood to uh, a large chunk of how you're feeling at the time and this is uh, if you uh, are lucid dreamer like me and have been doing a bit of, ex you know, you do exploration while you're dreaming, uh, you're trying to sort of figure out what's going on in the dream or, or where you are or uh, take stock of things. I mean, there, there are people who just, who will ride through life without necessarily noticing anything. And then there are others that, like myself, it's a bizarre, it's a bizarre position to be in. Where you seem to absorb everything that's around you, uh, you absorb your environment, and because it, it, it attaches heavily to mood and uh, and feeling to to, to the, your emotional state. Uh, you tend to attach the the experience to the particular mood or or, or feeling, and so what happens is when the mood and feeling come back even though you're not necessarily in the same environment, that environment comes back into the memory again, uh, comes back into your experience, and you get to re-experience the, the event that you were at, or, or where, whatever environment that you were in, you get to sort of re-experience it. And I call it absorption because this is fundamentally a new environment for me now, and I keep looking at it sort of, not necessarily in awe, but it's 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 you have to touch it to believe that 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 that's here, that it's real. And I I, I was amazed. I was looking at some of the older videos, some of the older older vlogs where this wasn't here. And I realized how barren it was. It was just just wasn't anything in the background. But now there's a, a, a significant amount in the background. It does. Uh, make a difference, and the why it makes a difference, why you feel the way you feel, it's, it's just simply not there. Uh, anyways, uh, this is the uh, ending segment uh, to uh, 
the very long weekend uh, the week the weekend uh, vlog. Uh, It was, in terms of the weekend, it was, because I'm still working on, working on this project, I'm working on the upgrades here, an interesting weekend, to say the least. I haven't sort of figured, sort of, I haven't really sort of found a way to articulate the way I was feeling, but nonetheless, uh, this is part of my, my reality now, and, and uh, I will more or less, more likely... Oh. More likely not to get used to it at some point in time. At some point in time, it will be standard. It will come start of my standard routine, part of my standard uh, experiences, and that's the way I'll live. And anyways, now on to some gaming and some meditation for the next hour or so.